We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryant, and welcome back. And here I am again. As a floating head, seems like whenever we do uh, these floating head videos, some people love them, some people hate them. Uh, it's just something a little bit different. Uh, always looking for a way to give you something else to look at, other than just me talking to you from uh, from a static image. Uh, the background that we're looking at here is actually from a Discover article that has the same name as today's blog entry, the Biocentric Universe, and. Uh, the picture that we're looking at here is credited to NASA slash ESA slash A. Schaller for STSCL. Two blogs ago, we talked about evolution's fast lane. And last blog, we discussed, does the multiverse really exist? This time, let's tie those ideas together. My friend Chuck Salyers has been encouraging me to learn more about Dr. Bruce Lipton, so I'm now waiting for my order to arrive from Amazon an audiobook called Spontaneous Evolution, Our Positive Future and How to Get There from Here. Bruce Lipton's body of work, including his popular book, The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter and Miracles, seems to be saying many of the same things I have about our role as quantum observers, the new science of epigenetics, and understanding that we have much more control over our reality than we've been led to believe. Which is not to say that I can use my free will to make my skin dark and not have to worry about sunburns, but it is to say that there is not just one inevitable path that each of us and the entire universe are moving upon. Here's what Dr. Lipton's website says about his work. The new sciences, quantum physics and epigenetics are revolutionizing our understanding of the link between mind and matter challenging established scientific theories and prompting a complete re-evaluation of life as we have known it. One of the shining lights to emerge from these new sciences is cellular biologist and best-selling author Bruce Lipton, PhD, whose book, The Biology of Belief, was awarded 2006's Best Science Book of the Year. Lipton maintains that pivotal to this shift in thinking within the scientific community has been groundbreaking insight into the function of genes. But wait, you might be thinking, isn't epigenetics only about how an individual can better manage the genetic hand of cards they've been dealt? What does that have to do with evolution? Here's the answer found in an article published last week in Science News, which talks about the concept of epigenetic inheritance. Not only can modifying your lifestyle change how your own genes are expressed, this can also change what genes you pass on to your offspring. Where does all this lead us? There was an article published in Discover Magazine this month that takes the question of how much control do we have over our reality to a fantastic conclusion. And uh, we'll give you a link to the article. It's called The Biocentric Universe Theory, How Life Creates Time, Space, and the Cosmos. And let me quote from the article which was written by Robert Lanza and Bob Berman. Biocentrism holds that the universe is created by life and not the other way around. This is an explanation for an extension of the participatory anthropic principle described by the physicist John Wheeler, a disciple of Einstein's who coined the terms wormhole and black hole. Even the most fundamental elements of physical reality, space and time, strongly support a biocentric basis for the cosmos. According to biocentrism, Time does not exist independently of the life that notices it. The reality of time has long been questioned by an odd alliance of philosophers and physicists. The former argue that the past exists only as ideas in the mind, which themselves are neuroelectrical events occurring strictly in the present moment. Physicists, for their part, note that all of their working models, from Isaac Newton's laws through quantum mechanics, do not actually describe the nature of time. The real point is that no actual entity of time is needed, nor does it play a role in any of their equations. When they speak of time, they inevitably describe it in terms of change. But change is not the same thing as time. I've talked about similar ideas with my project, with entries like the Flipbook Universe, the past is an illusion, Google and the group mind, 
and the Big Bang and the Big Pi. If we are to accept the idea of reverse fine-tuning of past conditions, and many quantum physicists do, this requires us to adopt a timeless perspective, which means that as we visualize the multiverse, we are outside of space-time, in a place where the distinction between past, present, and future is meaningless, one of Einstein's often quoted phrases. Biocentrism takes these ideas to an extreme. But if physicists like Seth Lloyd and Anton Zeelinger are correct when they say that information equals reality, then what are we really talking about here? Each of us is navigating through a data set that already exists, as we just discussed in Does the Multiverse Really Exist? In entries like Your Fifth Dimensional Self and in my book, I've talked about how this means there is already a best possible you that exists within the multiverse, and recognizing how you are already connected to that version of you is a way to help yourself get there. This will also be the subject of my next entry, which is called Now Versus the Future. One of my most popular videos at YouTube shows another way of visualizing the data that we're moving through, one plank length at a time as we select from our fifth dimensional probability space. As Brian Green says in the New Scientist article we discussed last time, How to Map the Multiverse, Ultimately, what we're talking about is like a landscape of different universes that are all just as real as the one we find ourselves to be in. And uh, we're going to finish off this time, uh, just give you a link to a video that we also talked about in our last blog, Imagining the Omniverse, which connects to all this uh, very nicely as well. Okay, so that's all for this time around. Uh, next blog entry, as I said, is going to be uh, actually looking at another of our poll questions, and this one is called Now versus the Future. I'm Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.